Hey buddies, welcome to Video Games Lonesome, truly lonesome today. Baby Hank's not here because he's having costumes worked on. Today's normal show at about you know seven o'clock, we said it might happen, got kind of canceled because of the YouTube Twitch purchase thing, vlog that I had to do. Um, so we had to kind of postpone any show that we might be doing. Hopefully The Walking Dead coming soon. We want to get the guys for it but I don't know if we're gonna be able to even do that. So maybe it'll just come with Becky and I soon. Anyways, I wanted to, oh, Becky's bringing Hank, but Becky, it's locked, or it's, it's bungee corded. Don't worry about it till maybe a break. Um, anyways, the reason I'm streaming today, I've been playing a lot of Hearthstone on my own, and I have been winning quite a lot. Uh, I've really gotten Arena down, kind of pat. Almost to the detriment of playing it because... Detrimental to my enjoyment, but this happens with magic as well. Once I've really fleshed out the, uh, the, the, the genre, or the, or I mean not the genre, but the card set, it starts to feel a little bit template to how I win. And I know exactly what cards are the most versatile and uh, the most likely to get me a win. Um, that's not to say it's not enjoyable and that there aren't still some surprises now and again, but, uh, like I said, with Magic this happens as well where you just get to a point where you understand the meta and that there aren't as many avenues for you to go down, like nothing, the stuff isn't as fresh anymore. Uh, the thing where Magic I think is a little bit better in that respect is that when you draft in Magic you open packs of cards that are 15 cards. So you have a much better opportunity to go for decks that are way out there, like something that you never expected to be able to draft. Like, you can force, they call it forcing. Like, usually you force a color, like I'm gonna force green. No matter how many, what happens, I'm picking the green card, the best green card. Usually that's a bad strategy, but if you, sometimes you do it just for fun. Um, you can like force a goblin deck or something like that. But in Hearthstone, if you try to force something, often you'll find you just never ended up even seeing the cards that you needed because there are so few options in the packs. There's only three cards per pack. And because of that, it kind of really limits your ability um, to, to do new and fun things. Sometimes you just end up doing a new, getting a really crazy deck to begin with for, for the hell of it, or you know, without you expecting it. And that's fun too. Anyways, uh, Unleash the Hounds has been nerfed. It cost one extra mana, that's unfortunate because it was not OP in Arena. Um, I heard that it's, it, it was OP, it was overpowered in Constructed. It's really too bad that Arena has to suffer because uh, Constructed had Unleash the Hounds marked as OP. Too bad, oh well. Um, because it really hurts in Arena having it at three casting cost now. Um, Okay, so I wanted to show you the reason I'm streaming is because I have the best record that I currently have ever gotten at this point. I'm a little bit of worried about uh, um, playing it on show because as I have said before, I don't play nearly as well on show. I'm thinking about talking to you and formulating my thoughts about what to say about what I'm seeing instead of concentrating on the action. I'm comfortable with the deck, but I am going into probably one of the most challenging. I might talk less than I usually do about my decisions and what I'm doing while I play this. Um, as predicted, now that I'm at this stage, now that I've gone 10 games, um, in the last two games I faced mages. I faced another shaman right before that, and before that it was a mage. Mage, more than any other class, is very, very successful in, in, in Arena. So much so that I don't even play Mage anymore because I find it boring. Mage is so easy to, 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 to go, like, you know, to go at least five... If you don't go seven games with Mage, I'm very surprised. Like, you know, if you're experienced with the game and you can't get to seven with Mage, it surprises me. Um, you must have gotten very unlucky in the draft if that happens. Because uh, Mage is just insanely good. Um, anyways, I'm predicting that I'm going to face another Mage right here. Uh, it might not happen, but I bet you I will. Safe money is on Mage. Um, anyways, my deck, I got really lucky by opening four Hexes. As you know, that's one of the best removal spells in the game. 
Um, it's because of its low casting cost. It's even better than Polymorph, in my opinion. Sure, it gives your, uh, your opponent a creature with Taunt, and that can be a little bit annoying. But he has no power, so he's not doing any damage to the minion that you're smacking him with. Um, and, uh, and it's one less mana casting cost. And one less mana can be all the difference in this game. Um, so I got four of those, which was very nice. Only one Flame Tongue Totem came up in my draft. It's possible I took a Hex over a f another Flame Tongue. I remember my fourth or my third Hex being a very difficult debate whether I took Hex, another Hex, or something like it might have been Flame Tongue. It could have been something else. I can't remember, but I remember having a tough time deciding. Um, Mana Tide, uh, thanks, Becky. Uh, Mana Tide Totem, got two of them. Very lucky to get those. They've come in, uh, they've done very good for me. Stormforge Axe, I think is one of the best pieces of equipment in the, in the game, at least in Arena. Sure, it doesn't look anything special, and it has Overload, which can be a little bit annoying sometimes, but as a two casting cost and the ability to do two damage so early game, you're finding yourself that this is sm this is clearing the board and keeping you active and able to attack when your opponent can't so early on. The reason I'm talking so much about Shaman is because as you saw, my first real attempt at Shaman on show did really poorly. I've had a trouble getting my head around Shaman. I find that he is very much luck based until I actually realized that it's not always luck with the totems. I don't know how the totems work, how they come out, but I know that once you've got one out, it won't give you another of that kind, so it's not completely random, but I do find that often when I'm playing against a shaman, it looks like he's just praying to whatever the gods are in, in uh, Warcraft that they will, that he'll get a taunting totem out, you know, or something like that. Like, usually, I mean, that's the nature of a CCG, it's, um, Lots of luck, you know, in all aspects of the game. I usually try to stay away from luck, though. I like to have as much control of the game as I can. Um, a Forked Lightning has been nice, especially with, when you have a plus one uh, a spell damage totem out. Um, and once again, just like my other best run that I've ever done, which was 9-3, actually it went 9-0 and then lost three. Um, <laughs> that was heartbreaking, but... Uh, just like that deck that I went with, I think it was Mage or was it Paladin? Um, I've done a few 9 win runs now. This is my first 10. Uh, no crazy legendaries, which makes me a little bit proud because it feels as though, you know, my deck isn't relying on insane cards to win. Not that that's a bad thing, you know, you use what you get and if you draw into, if you open up legendaries, you make sure that you build your your deck around making sure that you get to those legendaries on time, right? Uh, anyways, this deck isn't insane besides the four hexes. It's just a nice, solid, well-rounded, and I'm really proud of the curve. I gave up some really nice top-end cards in order to achieve this curve. Um, that's one of the, I think, the key things that develops your skill as an arena player in this game is your ability to make those tough choices during a draft that, yeah, you might be looking at, you know, a Yeti, but you might also have too high of a four cost spike uh, going or something like that. And you might end up taking, I don't know, it'd be tough to say that you'd take a Raptor over a Yeti, but unless you're really crazy into the four cost and had no low curve, but it's hard coming up with examples without actually it happening. But you know what I'm saying? The real skill from an arena player comes from being able to make those tough choices and say, is this card? In a vacuum, this is the better card, but in this situation right now, based on what I've already drafted, this is the better card. That's, I think, what I've developed as a player over time and what I'm most proud of. Um, anyways, what else have we got here? We got uh, Dark Iron Dwarf. I know that he was also a big debate. I can't remember what I didn't take over him, but I almost... It might have been another Stormforge Axe that I gave up to take the Dark Iron Dwarf. And it was later draft and I didn't feel like I had enough later game stuff. Um, always love having a, a news. Sometimes I love to have two at least, but one is fine. Um, Alright, so 
I guess I'm gonna jump in now and I'm nervous, probably gonna lose. Let's do this. <clears throat> it's gonna be a mage, I swear to fucking God, it's gonna be a mage. And this deck is actually, like, the only games that I've lost have been against mages in this deck. It's a little bit weaker to mages. A worthy opponent. Oh, great. It's going to be a mage then. De oh! Versus Uther. <laughs> Sweet! <laughs> I will fight with Who knows how good a deck he has, though. Probably a very good one. Okay, so Ancestral Spirit has actually come in real handy in this deck. Um, I remember being kind of disappointed when I got it because it didn't feel like that crazy strong a rare. But when I apply it to that that thing that has Taunt and Divine Shield, um, I love that. Unless it gets, you know, polymorphed. But uh, it has been quite good. Not a good early game card though, so I'm going to drop it. Acidic Swampu is awesome early game because against Paladin, who knows what he's gonna bring out early on. Stormforge Axe, like I said before, great early game equipment. One of the best. Two Stormforge Axe, not as good, but I'll take it. Job's done. Right off the bat, got an Earth Ring Fire Seer. Gets my um, Ice Elemental out of some tough situations often. Coming out right away with the coin to drop Acidic Swamp Ooze. Glad he dropped that now. That means Stormforge X next turn is taking that down. That's a kick in the pants for him. It's always a difficult debate when your only two drop is an Acidic Swamp Slime because you're like, ooze. You know, you're like, you know, do I drop this now? Do I hold on to it? Usually the correct choice is drop it. Get it out there. Don't rely. Don't play around equipment. If it's your only two drop, momentum is so important in this game to maintain momentum and keep going. Uh, see, in my in this in this situation right now, I have the choice between the the swamp ooze or to bring out a totem. I'm playing paladin and I only have one swamp ooze in my deck. Next turn, I can drop. You know, the question is, like, I can keep the board clear for at least two more turns with the axe. So at this point, I think I'm going to build up my totems. If I didn't have the, the, the Stormforge axe out, I might want to get a body on the board because the possibility of losing momentum early game is really daunting. It sucks when you he's got two three twos on the board and you have nothing and no way to deal with them you just see the game slipping away from you so early on it's so discouraging um all right so my options here i think i'm gonna drop the defender of argus and smack his minion with uh smack his minion with the axe just to keep that guy gone i don't think the paladin I still don't know the classes very, very well. I can't remember if the Paladin has a way to ping his Amani Berserker to make him activate next turn. But I'm okay with this, because I'm not trading anything. I've lost the last durability on my axe, but I've still got a Tauntra on the board. And yes, I didn't use the Defender of Argus to his full ability, but not a big deal. Twilight Drake is a goddamn decent 4-drop, especially with that many cards in your hand. Unfortunately, I don't have any one of my 4 hexes in hand. So I'm going to shut up for a moment as I think this out in my head. I wonder... I'm one da- even if I drop the Dark Iron Dwarf, I'm still one damage short of killing this Twilight Drake. And the axe is the same scenario. If I drop the axe... I wonder... I think... 
Since I have a taunting minion on the board, I think this is an ample opportunity to get Mana Tide out. Since he's going to have to use at least two cards. I'm going to get the Mana Tide out, drop the axe. Into the breach. Attack the face for now. Elements guide me. And next turn, I'm hopefully going to deal with the with the Twilight Drake. It depends on what I draw into. But next turn, with the Dark Iron Dwarf in combination with the Axe, and at least probably one of these guys still on the board, considering that this guy, he's going to want to get rid of him right now. If he has anything like, it's fifth turn, he can smack, an, smack him with a hammer. Um, I what I'm picturing is he hits this guy with his, with his Drake, and then hits this with either a, like something with charge or one of his hammers. He's got to have hammers in that deck if he's at this stage. Ten games in. Let me think. But I'm happy to have just gotten one card out of this guy even and distracted him. If he if he has to spend an axe to get rid of the totem and he's already given me a card, he, he did his job. Uh-oh, no! Yes! <laughs> but he's still gone. Oh well. That's probably the best way that that could have worked out for him. And I get a hex, which is really nice to have right now. So I'm gonna drop the hex. I wonder. I think I'll drop the hex on the the, the Drake. But first. It sucks because I'm still one point away from being able to take the Kodo down. Healing's not going to do me any good. Dark Iron Dwarf can give me lethal against him, but like, I mean... I would have to lose my guy for it. And take two to the four to the face, and I'm already getting much further down than him. I'm gonna put the hex. Oh shit! Fuck me! That was a fucking mistake because I'm live. Oh man, I should have attacked first. I wanted to go over the top, but I got so. See, that's not a mistake. I would have made it if I wasn't live and I wasn't talking like this. I wanted to go over the top, do two damage to him to get him a little bit closer to my health because I don't want him to feel too comfortable. I don't, uh, I don't like it when somebody is too far away from me in health because they start to do things that they otherwise wouldn't have the confidence to do. It's not your guys' fault. I just... Believe me when I say I make way more mistakes when I'm live than I do when I'm concentrating 100%. Um, so anyways, what I'd meant to do is do two extra damage. Let's hope that two extra damage doesn't like change the game on me. Oh, he got some health back on his Kodo, that's always nice. I was hoping to finish the Kodo with this next turn and the Dark Iron Dwarf. That'll do it. That takes out the Kodo, but do I want to? Because I'll lose the Flame Tongue next turn, like immediately. He'll probably kill it. But I'm getting rid of the Kodo, which can be a sticky creature. What to do? And I can also drop the Argent Squire right away if I do that. So this is what I'm going to do. The Flame Tongue to uh, Totem. You got to love a 1-1 one, one trade for... Uh... See, that's card value right there. Um... Oh, even he saw that. I thank you. The light protects me. So he's going to hit the totem probably right off the bat. 
He's not gonna want to trade, like there's, I mean, he could possibly take down the dwarf with both of these guys. I feel like that would be the wrong move. I wouldn't do that if I were him. Let me think. I, by the way, I did consider using the last durability to take this guy down so that he can't take away my divine shield next turn. And yes, like, I mean, keeping that out there is a little bit of a risk that I'm going to lose my last durability. I think it's worth the risk that he sends out a news next turn to keep this around for a possible extra little bit of damage I might need in the next couple turns. Ready to ride. Oh, that'll help. Oh, looks like it was the wrong decision to let that little guy live. It's a risk you take. You get, it, everything's a calculated risk, and not on my watch. And I'm still always re like kind of, kind of um, reevaluating if my risks were worth it or not. I might next time around I might reconsider what I just did based on that. All right. Hey, see, okay, so now I'm getting into that point where I, I'm wanting to rely on luck as a shaman and just pray that I get a taunting totem. Or... See, the problem is right now I'd like to play both of these to get myself a, an extra card, distract one of his guys for a turn. Um, or I can get a totem, pray that it's a taunting totem, and play this guy in the same, in the same hand. Uh, and that's the worst part is I don't know until I've played it, right? I wonder. I think it's a better idea for now to save this guy. I don't need cards that badly. So let me just see what this ends up being. Now the question is, take the Divine Shield or take out the 1-1? I think I'll take out the 1-1. And I'll take out that guy too. So I could have had an extra, like, I mean, yeah, sure, I lost my, my Dwarf because I left that 1-1 on the board last turn, but I got rid of a 2-2 two -two this turn by keeping the Axe in my hand. It's really debatable what was what's better out of that. The dwarf would only be a 4-1 right now if he had decided to smack it, which he probably I wouldn't wonder. have, in fact, so it would have been a 4-4. I would have taken extra face damage instead. He would have had an extra guy because of that. It's... I'm not a tactical genius. Uh, there are far better players than me because they can think ahead. If I was a genius, I would be on a pro tour. I'm only able to think like a half move ahead, not even a move ahead. Are you ready for this? Okay, so now I'm hoping for an, a hex, top deck of hex. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Yeah, yo! All right, so I'm gonna get rid of that right away. And then I'm going to pretty much clear the board. To battle! I don't have any bounce in my hand, so it doesn't matter what I trade here. Although he might, so maybe I should have I want the healing totem. Healing totem! You motherfucker? It is the healing totem. And I'm gonna... Well, I mean... Ah, oh, shit! Ah, oh, I shouldn't have done that. What I should have done was played him to heal him up to full. And then... Ah, oh, shit! And then played this. What? Fuck. I can't play that totem right now, even though I need cards. I want to keep this guy alive. Because right now he could play Consecrate and wipe my board if I didn't play him. Shit. Just 
kind of a waste playing this totem. You dare challenge the <laughs> top deck, top deck, shit! Well, it's better than nothing, but fuck, I wanted. Mm, it's to. It's pretty good, actually, to get this right now, <laughs> I guess. What I really wanted, though, was board wipe. Okay, uh. Please taunt, 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 shit. See, this is the kind of shit I don't like to rely on in this game. Let's just hope he doesn't play a Stormwind uh, soldier next turn. No Stormwind. If you don't play a lot of Hearthstone, there's a 6-6 six, six that costs 7 to cast, and it gives plus 1, plus 1 to the whole board. That would make him have 4 two twos, which would make him be able to take out almost everything that I have. Let me think. Fuck. <sighs> I don't like that he has card advantage right now, because as it is, he's sitting pretty in a way. Is he going to heal this thing? Does he have a plan with that? No? Okay. Ah, now I can draw some cards. All right. The bad thing is that all it takes for him next turn is to, like when I play this, all he has to do is remove the Divine Shield with the, the Demolisher. Well, let's hear it. First of all, obviously I'm doing that. Um, I'm gonna play this. But next turn, all he has to do is smack it with the Demolisher to get rid of the Divine Shield and then hit it with this thing. I mean, and if he gets really lucky, this thing is going to hit it with a barrel. So he doesn't even have to lose his Demolisher. I fight. I hope that it survives longer than that, because I want to draw some cards. That helps. Sweet. It hit my face. So the Divine Shield stands, if he wants to get rid of this, he's gonna have to trade both of these or use something in his hand like a Hammer or a Consecrate would be his best card right now. It would get rid of the Divine Shield and everything but this. That helps too. All right, so he's gonna trade these two. The good thing is I get one more card at least. Next turn, I'm gonna silence this. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to deal with the Iron Forge Rifleman unless I get something to pump up the Argent Squire or finally draw into one of my board clearing cards. Uh, fuck. Fuck. I won't get one more. Shit. Reporting for duty. Yeah, he's got good board domination right now. Please give me board clearance, god damn it. <sighs> All right, so obviously, all right, I'm going to silence this thing unless I draw something like board clearance. What to do? Pass me that arc light spanner. No. Your magic shall not save me. At least I evened up the board a little bit. I'm in a position, no position to go for the face. I need to keep his board as clear as possible. And that did it. 
So at least I'm getting some card draw. I'm hoping that's a piece of equipment. That would be just so nice to be able to finally drop my ooze. I'm gonna keep this ooze in my hand for the rest of the game. Because a late game like this, with where cards are such a commodity, if he Reporting for duty. if he draws into a hammer or whatever the the light the axe or the sword or whatever the fuck the paladin has, that just changes the game completely. So you're probably gonna see me keep that ooze in hand for quite some time. Hmm. Okay, so that means that that could either be the 2-1 that pops out to save whoever I attack. It could also be... Help me out, guys. What else could that be? Uh, the Paladin only has, like, that one good secret, right? Get down! That's likely what he has. Dust Devil! Not great late game, amazing early game if you're not up against the uh, druid or the mage. There's not much I can do here but try to take this out, but does he got to get down? Yeah. Alright. Get down! Let's see what I draw into before I cast anything else. Yes! Yes! Meaning that I get to cast my Dust Devil and keep him safe for a turn. Meaning I'm hitting him next turn for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 damage. If he can't, unless he gets Consecrate, it's either 10 damage next turn, unless he top text Consecrate, and then I'm going in for two. <laughs> and that's it. Well, I still get to hit for four. And he gets to draw a card too. That's why that card is so fucking amazing. And he gets a goddamn taunter. Thank you, top deck. We're both getting some pretty strong top decks. And I heal up my, uh, making, she's now out of range of Consecrate, which is very good. That's not a good top deck for him this time. I don't like that he has one extra minion though, but this'll help. Um, let's hope that this, he takes out the 2-2, two -two, or the 2-1. He didn't. So I'll trade the one with more health. Actually, wait. In this case, yeah, that's what I want to do. Because then when they heal, they'll both be 2-3 again. Can't remember if Paladin has any better board clearance than Consecrate. Concentrate, Consecrate with a plus one spell damage on... The table. He's got something in his hand. I wonder what he kept. All right, so hey, give me a minute. now it's becoming really tough to justify keeping the ooze in my hand because I need to finish this game. But at the same time, I'm still terrified of equipment, where I have so few creatures on the board. I don't hey, think that a three-two that can be taken out with Conse consecrate is worth laying down for that risk. I think it's much better to have removal, equipment removal stay in my hand. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be kidding me! All right. And a secret to protect him for a turn. Reporting for duty. I think we can all assume what that secret is. I've got my own Venture Co. Mercenary. If I deal two damage to him... If I deal two damage to him, I can swing in with... These two? 
I don't want to trade two minions for that. But I really don't have much of a choice. I need to get him off the board. Or he's going to start taking out my best stuff. I need him gone. That was a tough decision, but... Hey, give me a minute. I can do this by... Yeah. Oh fuck, I just realized, I just forgot about the secret. Ah, fuck it. I guess I'm not losing her, I'm losing my... God damn it, I'm losing my Kodo. That was a mistake. Second misplay. Fuck. Two misplays this game. One was not going over the top before I played Hex earlier. The second was not paying attention to the forgetting about the secret that I'd just gotten done talking about. Surprisingly, with the board as it is right now. Oh, oh. Yeah, I'm okay with this. I actually want to keep the forked lightning. No, because you need two targets to use it, and that might not always happen. Let's let's start. It might not be a lot of face damage, but let's start doing some face damage. Keeps the board clear. Oh, I have every guy. Don't consecrate. Reporting for duty. Sorry that happened. Well played. <laughs> How you doing? And he lets me finish. What a good guy. I'm going on to my 12th game, or my potential 12th win. This is my biggest record. My best record yet. 11-2. And the next key is lava. All right, guys. I'm going to take a break. Be right back, maybe with baby Hank back here, and uh, my hopefully 12th win on the show. I am not going to expect it. There's, I am just not going to expect a 12th win. But if it happens, oh goodness, would that be fun. Be right back after this.
Hey buddies, welcome back to Hearthstone Lonesome Show. Baby Hank's back with his goggles on. I'm playing, I'm going into my hopefully 12th win. If not, it's been a damn good run with a very, I think, solid but modest deck, despite the fact that it has the very appreciated four hexes, which have been the cornerstone, obviously, to this deck. Um, no legendaries, the only real <clears throat> you know, crazy rares in it are the Mana Tide Totems. <clears throat> Again, very appreciated to have two of those in here. But I would say if anything you could say in this deck makes it, like, you know, crazy, it's the four hexes and the two Mana Tide Totems. The, that, you know, I'd take that over a legendary any day, and I did. So, here we go. I'm going in. Please not a mage. Please not a mage. Please, 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 please. The last game, I'm I'm happy because I actually faced, I faced his legendary Onexia, and still did okay. Oh, it takes longer. The further you get into an arena, the longer it takes to find an opponent. Because I think I read that like the number of people who make it to the twelfth game is like point six, like a, si a half of a percentage, so one in 200 people make it to this point. So it's going to have trouble finding me a challenger. Alright, here we go. Versus it was almost guaranteed that Last it was going to be a fucking mage. Oh, oh, that's a... Ah, you know, like, I mean... It's a good opening hand if I wasn't up against a mage, but the dust devil is no good against a mage. Everything else is pretty decent though. I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully I'll draw into something that does damage, but even if I don't, I've still got the flame tongue totem, which can make my, my um, like first turn, I will play a totem with my coin. Second turn, I'll send it the flame tongue. And a hex is always good to have around. That's not as good. I would have rather a different creature that would do some damage, but whatever. The point is the wind, I hope I don't even draw into him in this game because he's just useless against the mage. She just pings him like that. That's why I didn't take more than one of him. I had the option to take another. And he, he won me a lot of games, but he also was a useless card in a lot of other games. But he's just a one drop. But he has overload too. That's why he's not good. He ruins your next turn, early game. I'm just glad that wasn't the one one totem. Someday I'll be just like you. Okay, I'm gonna trade that totem next turn with her. Now, she's probably going to want to zap this with some fire, or I mean with some ice. Someday I'll be just like you! She didn't. Okay, so I guess I'm j what I'm going to do is... I mean, I could hex her to keep my flame tongue alive for at least another turn. Or, I could play a totem and distract her for a turn. With the wind. Fury Dust Devil, but then I'll lose two mana next turn. I think my choices are either hex her and keep the flame tongue around, but at that point you have to start wondering, like, what's the flame tongue doing? Which is nothing. Or I put out the mana tide and let her decide which one she wants to get rid of. And if she tries to take the mana tide, she's gonna have to lose her. She's gonna have to lose her little apprentice. Glad to have this. Now I'm hoping that she goes for face damage. That for some reason she leaves these two alive. She won't. Ah, fuck. 
God damn it. She got the best of both worlds. At least I get to get rid of both of those. Hopefully both of them. Two to three damage. Gosh. Oh. And I'm going to lose two mana next turn if I do this. Please, please do three damage to him. This is what I hate about Shaman. Too much fucking luck involved. Oy. And if she wants to waste two mana to get rid of him, so be it. Like, he's... There's nothing else in my deck that would make him better to drop later. So I'm just dropping him. Don't mess with Tusk. Job's done. All that mana locked up. I guess, in a way, I kind of screwed myself by playing him because I was forgetting about the overload. So that it wasn't just okay to lay it there. That was a misplay then, because I'm not... I've only played him... It's funny because I even just talked about the overload. Cool. Ah. Oh wow, she's rolling out. But the fact is, even though that was a misplay, what was I gonna do last turn? It was either play a mana tied totem or hex what? Hex her razor fen hunter? None of my possibilities were really that good last turn. Um Because I didn't have enough mana, I wouldn't have had enough mana for the Stampede and Kodo because I just played um, the other mana, or the board wipe. Uh, yeah, it, it was a misplay, but it wasn't really much different than what I ended up would have doing. That I would have ended up doing. Um, I think I'm gonna waste some time. I'd rather play her with this on top and pray for no polymorph. In the meantime, I mean, I could put out the Kodo who also needs to be answered, which he might. Little time. My choices are Hex or play her now or Kodo. I don't like that he can just smack the face next turn, and with Mage, you don't want to get anywhere near. Yeah. Plus, you know, her with the Ancestral Spirit could just be answered with a Polymorph, which is just the worst thing ever. And I don't like that if I had played the Kodo, he would have come over with the Dark Iron Dwarf, just like that. And with Mage, especially this late, She's almost guaranteed to have that 10 face damage card in there. Uh, although I haven't seen her... Ah, oh, fuck. And she gets the face damage anyways. Fuck. No choice now. Uh... Or do I put out? I don't think a totem's gonna help me much. The light protects me. Put some bodies down just to have something to deal with stuff next turn. She's gotten some beautiful momentum early game here, and she has yet to even show a flame strike, and she's got him. She's got a flame strike. Oh, she's got a nice deck. So I can hex this guy, which will deal with the shield at the same time. Um, 
I'm gonna, but I'm gonna play the Kodo. I'm gonna pray that it gets rid of the frog, and not the Master Swordsmith. Then I'm gonna hex him and hit her with the Panther. Please get the frog. Please get the frog. Thank you. Now I hit him. Now I hex him. I don't like getting rid of that hex. That was my protection for late game fatties, which I'm sure she's gonna play. Fucking mage, man. Jesus Christ. She's got another fireball. All right, I'm gonna hit the froggy. It's the only thing I can do right now. Let's hope for a taunting minion, a taunting totem. No. I mean... Squire, attend me! Ready, sir. And this, the, like, I mean, I think this is one of, gonna be one of my last turns. I think that there's gonna be a flame strike in my future, even if I survive this. Which will wipe the board, keeping only my well Kodo. Played. That's why I put that on another fireball. Mage is insane in arena. God, she rolled out good. And that's how every um, mage battle I went up against in this entire run was like. Mage is OP in arena. It's insane. But it was a good run. See people saying, I would like to hear, I, I'm open to opinions, don't fear, like, you know, input at this point. I saw some people in Shadow Chat saying that they thought that I should have played a couple moves earlier. Um, in what way? And then when I'm done hearing your input, I'm going to go open some cards and see what I won. <clears throat> Except I am banning a couple people here. One that said I'm butt hurt, and another person who says I'm blaming everything but my own mistakes. Even though during the stream I call out my own misplays multiple times when I see them. So, two people banned, because I don't like assholes in the chat. But if you have constructive criticism, I'm open to it. But I'm not playing hand lock. Wait, what? Anyways, um, it's taken a while for people to give any feedback if they have it. I'm gonna head into an 11 win key and see what it is like. I like how you can also go 11 games and my average right now is like, I would say I average like at least seven wins any arena that I do, maybe even getting near eight. Um, but regardless of that, people always will say that you played it wrong. Thanks, Zet Zedayan. It's funny when I do Hearthstone streams, we get more new viewers than any other, sh any other game that we stream because so many people watch Hearthstone stuff. It's also the reason that we get a lot of jerks in the chat because a lot of people like to backseat game, but... I'm not seeing anybody who earlier who was saying that, okay, you played fine locking up your mana that was a misplay definitely a bad play but um uh, 
I'm trying to find the comment somebody said earlier that they thought that I'd made a wrong move near the end there with the Kodo. I saw people chanting for the Kodo, but I don't know why I should have played him a turn earlier, because even if I did play the Kodo... Even if I did play the Kodo a turn early, um, he could have still gone over the Kodo and hit my face, and he still had board dominance. The fact is, she was getting me within range, and you could tell the way she was playing that she was getting me within range of those fireballs. She was being very aggressive, which makes sense because she had board control, um, which is why I knew that anything but taking guys out on the board was what I needed to do. I can't even remember what I did anymore. <laughs> Whatever. Let's get back to... Let's, let's open it up. Let's see what I want. Two hundred five gold, pack of cards, one hundred sixty gold, and ew, eighty magic dust. I don't play constructed. All right, I guess I'm gonna open my packs now. I saw one person. I don't remember. The mistake you made was playing that Kodo, hoping that it kills the two on Murloc when he was able, when you were able to attack the one ones first and then kill him. Oh, well that was a misplay, yeah, okay, I'll acknowledge that. Like I said earlier, um, I, uh, I don't think things through nearly as good as I do on my own. I'm talking so much for the sake of the show and because some, like, I mean, I like talking out my strategies, even if it does fuck me up sometimes. Here we go. This is gonna take a while. Hope I don't get Carpal Tunnel opening all these. Cool. Lightwell is a good priest card. Yeah. I don't know if it's good in Constructed, so it doesn't really matter to me. I do have to say, I think there was another reason why I didn't take out the two one ones before hoping that the Murloc was dead, and I, but I can't, I thought there was a third guy on the board that I wanted to hope for. I can't. Oh, that, that was when the charging guy with the divine shield was out. Yeah, never mind, it was a misplay. Pit Lord. Such a chore opening these cards. Two golden commons. The 
Bane of Doom, deal two damage to a character. Oh, random demon. I hate that card. I don't like it in Arena, and I don't imagine it's much better in uh, Constructed. Because the random demon can end up being, like, crappy, like uh, the little 3 2 guy or something. Golden Rare, Starfire. South Sea Captain. I imagine there's some fun decks that use the South Sea Captain, right? Probably not competitive ones, but really like fun to play ones anyways. Do people, like, um, I've heard that the constructed environment, it involves ranking, right? like getting ranked, but does that discourage people from playing fun decks because it might affect your rank if you lose using a silly deck? Because that would suck that people would just not play fun decks because they're afraid of losing. There's ranked constructed and casual constructed. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Circle of healing. Come on, epic legendary. I mean, golden legendary. I got one before, if anybody didn't see that. He goes, golden legendary! A shield slam. Mm, preparation. Well, there we go. So that was my, my, my attempt at 12 wins. Still haven't gotten there, but that leaves just, you know, one more thing to look forward to. And what I look forward to is that one day making it to 12 wins without using Mage. Because <laughs> goddammit, Mage is OP. I'm telling you, as somebody who almost exclusively used Mage for most of my early Hearthstoning, Mage is fucking insane. And it, every time you get to the later games, you're up against like every other guy or even more than that is a mage because they just get to the end even better. Somebody in there said there's a statistic site that actually backs up my assertion on that, that like says that mages win the most. I don't know how they would get statistics for Hearthstone unless they just trust people to enter them. But, um, anywho, let's do another fresh deck on the show. Just one arena run tonight. Uh, so we'll be right back um, with another another deck.
hey guys, welcome back to <clears throat> the show. Um, I was just thinking about that 11-3 run that I just did, and um, according to the statistics I read online, it's something like going 11-3, like, oh. Hey guys, welcome back to Hearthstone Lonesome. I just went 11-3 in Arena with a really cool, really awesome uh, Shaman deck. And I was just thinking about um, uh, how I did, or like the statistics I saw online about how many people do with 11-3. Uh, and it's something like, you know, 0.3% go that far, get 11 wins. And I was doing the math, and it's kind of like that's kind of like getting in about the top ten of a 500-person tournament, or somewhere around there, um, which is interestingly enough often how I would do in 500-man Magic tournaments. I would, I would say, every other tournament I could get into the top ten, but I wouldn't usually make better than like seventh or eighth place. I think my best ever was fifth place. The distance between consistently getting into top 10 and consistently getting into the top five is just a world apart. Like to be, you know, the top, the people who every so often get into top 10 are really good players. And I considered myself to be a pretty dang good player. The people who consistently got into top five are just like, you know, friggin' strategic savants. They're people that I probably wouldn't, never be able to beat in a game of chess, let alone magic or any other game like that. They're just really fucking good at thinking like three turns ahead. And I kind of resigned myself to know that I'm never going to be a fucking magic pro because I'm not that good. I'm just pretty good and I really enjoy myself playing it and I enjoy myself even more when I'm winning. All right, jumping into another arena run with you guys. And I'll talk through my process, and knowing my luck, knowing me on show, you're gonna... Actually, I've been doing pretty good on show. I've been usually going like 6-3 on show. But I'm probably gonna be doing not nearly as good as I just did in that run. Uh, but it should be fun. I, well, I mean, what I usually like to do on the show is... What I've been doing to this point is choosing the class I'm least comfortable with so that I can get your guys' feedback as I go. In that case, it would be Rogue, however, and Rogue is my least experienced character. I've had the least experience with her. However, Rogue is gonna get me killed because Rogue, I think out of any character, has the most options open to her. Um, at, any, at, any, like, at any given time. She's always got a full hand of stuff that's got combo abilities, meaning you have to think about which ones you want to put at, in what order and which combo cards you want to waste, basically, by playing them without a combo and when you should waste them and when it's a good idea. To do that while talking it out in addition to that, I don't think that it's a good idea right now for me to play Rogue. <laughs> Uther? Maybe? Garrosh is a lot of fun and... To be honest, I don't want to be streaming all night because I want to watch Game of Thrones. And Garrosh tends to have fast games. <laughs> you know, I think, well, I mean, he's got that healing ability. He's not as fast as the Warlock games. But I think I want to be aggressive. I'm going to go with Garrosh for fun because I'm in a sort of like a beat down mood. All right, let's see here. So Defender of Argus stands out to me as the best card in this pack. You love Argent Commander, but nowhere near as good as Defender of Argus. Um, Argent Commander gets you out of sticky situations, but so does Argus, definitely. It's no question on for that one. Next up, Battle Rage. Draw a card for each damage-friendly character. I've never used this in an arena. <laughs> This decision makes it for me, actually, because I think Corehound is too weak for a 7-drop. He can be traded with so many cards and so easily taken out. Um, that 9, it, it, it makes you want to pick him for that 9 offense, but the 5 defense on the 7th turn is just so easily 
Zotted. All it is either going to trade for a five drop, who has five um, tough or five power, or he's going to trade for like a three drop plus one other card in his hand. So sure, you're getting a two for one, but you're also losing a seven drop. Um, and on seventh turn, I'd rather be playing two cards that cost three and four than one card that costs seven. That's just how I feel. Shield bearer, you don't want that. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm gonna go with Battle Rage, um, even though I've never used it. I've seen a, a warrior use it against me before, and he did, um, he got three cards out of it, and you have to remember that it says for each friendly character, meaning that includes you. So that's okay. Stampede and Kodo, I love him when he two for ones, he doesn't always two for one. The Kodo, as cool as he is, doesn't beat the, the Defender of Argus. Having two in my deck is going to make me very happy going into this, especially having guys that giving it having a guy that gives plus one defense to characters is really strong in a Garrosh deck in a warrior deck because he's known to hurt his minions to enrage them. So, and then the Emperor Cobra, nice to have around, but not going to take him over Argus. Fiery War Axe seems to be the pick here. Um, you know, it's right on par there with the um, Shaman uh, Axe for two, but it can do three damage, meaning it can get rid of sticky, uh, stickier two drops, such as the Imani Berserker. In fact, on that last Shaman run that I did, 11-3, um, one of the games I lost to was this uh, mage that just kept on bringing out guys with, like he brought out a croc, all I had was a an axe for the first couple turns, and I thought that would be enough to keep the board clear. But it, she brought out a croc, then another croc, or no, a croc, and then an Amani Berserker. And she just kept on bringing out stuff that was just out of my range of killing. So in that case, I think, you know, Fiery War Axe is going to maybe even be better, in my mind, than the Shaman's Axe. I'm just... It doesn't have anything to do with what I'm doing right now. I'm just talking out what I think about the cards, in case you're interested. Another Fiery War Axe, happy to have two. The Iron Fur Grizzly, he's okay. I think a lot of people really slam the Grizzly, like that he's useless or something. He's not bad to have, and he's even halfway decent to have in a, uh, in a uh, Hunter deck. Um, he doesn't quite beat the, the one drop infiltrator that has a guaranteed two damage or trades for a two three or a three two um, uh, on the first turn or second turn. Uh, however, Silvermoon Guardian with his Divine Shield, he's a little bit pricey, but is that Divine Shield worth that one extra mana for a three three? What do you guys think? I haven't actually used Silvermoon Guardian that often. I know that when he's out on the board, he's annoying. Um, do you guys like the Worgen or do you like the 3-3, uh, Divine Shielder? I'm taking your advice on this, because I've played with Worgen Infiltrator and I found that it comes in handy quite often with that stealth, but, um, I'm willing to hear Kate, your case for Silvermoon Guardian. I've had to formulate all of my own opinions on all of these cards, because people kept suggesting that I go read, like, other players' rankings of the cards to learn, but I wanted to just play it to find out what the cards were like. I'm willing to take your advice on it, or like, reasons why, but, um... Most people are saying Worgen. Yeah. Silvermoon Guardian for three mana would be a way different card, and I'd probably take him instantly over the Worgen Infiltrator. All right, Worgen. And they're saying like mages are annoying against the uh, Infiltrator, so since they're the bane of my existence. Here, I like the Stranglehorn Tiger, and I still have yet to draw into some late, later game stuff. Ogre Magi, I barely even like when I'm playing like a class that has a lot of spells. Um, I prefer the Kobold over the Magi because the Kobold can also usually be comboed out with the spell that you plan to pump that extra damage into. Um, or the, the, the guy with the, 
the big body that has the plus one um, damage. Or of course, the friggin' card draw um, dragon that comes out with plus one. Um, but anyways, Tiger, I would, I would be happy to get a Tiger later on to fill in my top end. He's a very awesome five drop, but nothing really beats another axe. Um, the only time I would pass up an axe in that situation is if I already had like four axes maybe and didn't have any late game stuff, I might have passed up the another axe. Maybe, if, yeah, something like four axes. All right, Wind Fury Harpy is kind of unanswered. She is a force, especially if she's buffed, but she's almost always answered right away. Again, it's that five toughness that late in the game. Sure, it's one drop earlier than the Lava Hound, but five toughness is just so easily dealt with at that stage. Um... This guy will almost always charge out, I think, probably, with, uh, with Garrosh. However, and he is a 1-drop. A 2-1 on turn 1, easily answered by the mage, however. Especially on turn 2. Loot Hoarder, if not answered, does 2 damage. If it is answered, you get your card back. I prefer the Loot Hoarder over the deckhand, even in a game with lots of weapons. What do you guys think? Right now, without any advice from you, I'm saying Loot Hoarder, but I'm willing to hear your your reasons for it. Because I'm, like, it's still close for me, even though I, I, you'd say Hoarder, no question, eh? Okay. I would say it's not no question. I think that it's debatable, even though I do lean towards the Hoarder anyways. I love the Abuse of Sergeant, because he guarantees him two extra damage, even if he gets killed then right away. And he's a one drop, so if you're up against not the mage, or not the druid, then he ends up being a very annoying one drop. Gnomish Inventor is great for drawing in... Oh man, this is a... Uh... Card draw is beautiful, though her body is not much to be... I think I've already made the joke about the Gnomish Inventor's body. But um, as a four drop, like that, not a huge body. Amani Berserker with Garrosh, if I draw into more Abusive Sergeants, Abusive Sergeant plus Imani Berserker is just insane as an early game rollout. Um, Garrosh has a bunch of other things like the do one damage to a creature to let him go in and comboed out with the Imani Berserker can be just crazy. Uh, wow, everybody seems really split. I'm seeing people say Berserker, some people are saying Sergeant. Some are saying Card Draw. I'm seeing it all over the place here. You know, I said going into this that I wanted to be aggressive, that I was in the mood for an aggressive beatdown deck, and I think the Amani Berserker plays most into that for me. And if you go, will go to my Twitter right now at twitter.com forward slash far from subtle, look at the Hearthstone screenshots, go down to the third one down and look at that screenshot. That was my last Garrosh deck. Look at the curve. That's why I'm not concerned with evening out my curve with Garrosh. It was ridiculous. It was, the, the curve was one was here, two was here, three was here, four was here. <laughs> And five and six were like right there. Like, so it was all in the first three columns. I'm going with Berserker. <clears throat> he does, Sergeant has serious merit and I would love to have him comboed with the Berserker later. All right, so now we're looking at some late game drops. Now I have no choice. And that's another reason why I often try to stay away from late game drops in a deck if I have a choice within a, within a pack between a really decent early game drop and a really decent late game drop, I will almost always take the early game drop because I find that it's much easier to fill out your later curve than it is to fill up the early curve with, with quality cards. I think it's much more important to take the decent early drops than the late ones. Um, in this case, I don't have too much of a choice, 
Violet Teacher, not amazing with Garrosh. I don't even like her that much with with normal. Like, I mean, the 3-5 body's okay. She's, I guess she's not bad. Like, it's, you know, the fact it, because the, uh, I mean, when you think about it, the Yeti is a 4-5 for 4, and he doesn't have the extra little 1-1s one that come out of him that she gives birth to, apparently. On the other hand, she's a rare, and she's almost always, unlike the Yeti, you're comparing her to other rare cards that are usually better than her. Um, in this case, because of the taunt, even though I love the Ravenholt's assassin, and when you're staring down one of these guys and you can't answer him and you know that he's smacking for seven next turn, it's daunting, it's terrifying. But Sunwalker, I'm agreeing with what you guys are saying in there. Sunwalker, taunt, earlier drop, divine shield, it's just, she's got the whole package. I'm going with that. Another X. I love the wolves, hate the snapjaw. Love the wolves, but the axe beats the wolves. Another weapon, and an infiltrator, and some direct damage. <laughs> That's an easy choice, another weapon. Wow, I need to start looking for stuff to synergize these weapons. What does Garrosh have? I guess pirates. I'm looking for pirates now, I guess, with all these weapons. Abuse of Sergeant combo as well with um, the Amani Berserker, which I already have one of. Well, uh, wait, no, he doesn't because he doesn't. He's not the one who does the one damage. I think I'm gonna go with the Acolyte of Pain because I lack card draw. And once again, I'm hoping I draw into those. Um, I forget what they are. What's the card that Garrosh has? The guy that comes out and does one damage and gives plus two attack. He's like a three three, or maybe he's a two two. He's like a, he's an ogre. Taskmaster, Masters, and Inner Rages. So I'm gonna pick up the Accolade of Pain hoping that I end up getting some Inner Rage or Taskmasters. Because at this point, both Taskmaster and Inner Rage would help two cards that I have at this point. And there he is. No, that's the charge. And here's the Equipment Giver. Dark Iron Dwarf is a damn good card, but he doesn't beat the Equipment uh, Lady. They're all four drops. The charge 4-3 is awesome. And I almost, I would say the best card in a vacuum out of this pack is the Weaponsmith. But because I have so many weapons already, it makes me, it makes me pause and think that how often am I going to have her in my hand and already have a weapon equipped? Because of that, I think I'd rather have the 4-4 body with an extra 2 attack. Yeah. Especially since the more weapons you toss into a deck, you have to realize that that means the more face damage you're going to be taking as you smack characters with them. So I'm going with the Dark Iron Dwarf for that reason. And I hope that's the right decision. You may disagree, but I think that... If it was my first pick and I open these, Weapon Smith, no question, but <clears throat> just because I have five weapons already. Uh, okay, so Scarlet Crusader, all three of these are very good cards. She's easily dealt with by the mage. He's not dealt with at all until the second turn after he's already attacked. Silverhand Knight is pretty damn good. He's not nearly as aggressive as the Elite. And I'm going for aggressive in this deck. I want to just keep on smacking over the top, keeping the board clear with my weapons, and just keep on going for the face over and over and over. I don't feel like Scarlet Crusader, her biggest... Scarlet Crusader's biggest asset is that she can trade once and then still stay on the board. Whereas, uh, and that's good for removal, but with the amount of weapons I already have, I feel like removal's not going to be nearly as important as just getting in there for more face damage while I continue smacking with my weapons. Silverhand Knight's similar. He gives you board advantage when you need it. I don't think I'm going to need it. I'm going for the aggression. Frost Elemental is one of my favorite cards in the entire game. 
he buys you turns, he's got an amazing body, well, I mean, a really good body for a six drop, especially since he usually buys an extra turn for himself, meaning he stays alive longer than he would even on the six turn and even with the five toughness. Yes, five toughness is e easily answered, but not when you take away their best guy on the, on the board for a turn. So, Frost Elemental. Oh, okay. Next up, another charge. Okay, this is a little bit tougher because I want an aggressive, aggressive curve. A second Frost Elemental is gonna get a, a, take me a little bit further away from that aggression. I think Frost Elemental is hands down better than the Elite. I'm on the 16th pick. Frost Elementals are going to be harder to find than Elites later. Uh, I'm going to take the Frost Elemental even though I want to be more aggressive. Having two is just... makes me really feel comfortable. Gathbard saying save the sixth spot for something better. Do you think something better? It, it, it is very possible, isn't it? Something, and I did say earlier, you usually want, if you're on the fence, you want to take the earlier stuff because it's harder to fill in than the later stuff. And within the next 14 packs, I really am probably going to draw into some better late game cards, aren't I? <laughs> I just fucking love the Frost Elemental. All right. That was a good point, though. I'll take it. I'll take the advice. Draw a card for each friendly damaged character. This guy's, um... River cross list, decent two drop, but I'm not lacking in those, so let's just get him off of the table of options. Battle Rage, conditional, can help you out late game, but Girobashi Berserker is one of my, he's incredible with a mage and pretty damn good with Garrosh, even though I have yet to draw into these um, supposed mythical taskmasters and um, uh, inner rages, but I hope I get one because he is now the third card that would benefit from both of those cards. Slam can help me activate, and he's also removal, making it versatile. However, Abusive Sergeant is, eh, he doesn't do the damage. All right, so it's down to these two. The Taunt can help me, especially if I'm gonna keep on going for the face. The taunt heaps, keep, helps keep me stuff alive enable, and enables me to do that. Whereas the slam activates a total of one, uh, two, and... Where was the other guy that activates? Oh, Accolade of Pain. Not as much the Accolade of Pain, but it's versatile too because it can do it can do extra damage too when you really need it. It can be card draw, it can be activation, it can be extra damage. However, Tazdingo is one of my favorite four drops and he usually comes around right when you need him. Tazdingo! You think Taunt would be the most useful? Yeah. I'm almost always more likely to choose Meat over Spells because Meat can stick around for much longer than a spell ever can. Spell's gone. You use it, it's gone. Having a spell that draws a card is always also good though. But I'm gonna go with Tazdingo. Whenever a minion attacks, gain plus one attack. I've never used this guy in a deck yet, but I immediately look at that and I see my gaping three drop spot and I see the fact that he's a two four for three makes me think that he's an auto choice in this pack. Argent Commander, awesome, but not willing to put that six and fuck the, I don't need the teacher. It seems obvious to me. Frothing Berserker, even though I've never used him, he looks like the easily the strongest card in this pack. Especially for my the strategy I want to do. Cruel Taskmaster, finally! Leper Gnome, very annoying guy, but not as good as what I really have been waiting for this guy to come around. Um, again, I have tons of weapons so far. Even though I'd like one more weapon, I don't like that 
that when if she's in my hand and I have a weapon equipped, I don't like that I have to think about keeping her in hand. If I need a 3-3 on the board, I'm gonna want it on the board. I feel like she's amazing, but not when you already have four fiery war axes. So, cruel taskmaster. And another Amani Berserker to go along with him, or a Yeti. This is a tough decision, especially because of my, what I've said about what I want to do in this deck. I want to be aggressive as hell. And the Amani Berserker is extremely aggressive. Oh, the fucking Worgen. And he fits right into my curve, doesn't he? I didn't even think about him. For some reason, I was picturing him as something else. I wasn't even thinking of him. Uh, yeah, Worgen. I've rarely played with him because, like I said, I haven't been playing with Mage very much. Because that's who else, that's the only other character you'd really want to play with him, I think. All right, I'm gonna pick him and really, really hope to get another Taskmaster. So, these are three really strong cards, and I'm think, curve-wise I want to go with the tiger, utility-wise I want to go with the elemental, and then power-wise I want to go with the, and also curve-wise I want to go with the frost wolf warlord, and I'm just thinking about how much meat I already have, and it's a lot, I have a lot of creatures. And I have a lot of weapons, meaning I'm probably going to be keeping the board clear without trading, without needing to trade. That's the strategy anyways. I feel like on the fifth turn, it's very likely that he's going to be coming out as a 6-6 six, six on turn 5. If not, if I'm lucky, a 7-7. Seven, seven. Some of you are saying Tiger. I like that the Tiger is a guarantee. He's guaranteed to stick around until the turn in, that you need him to attack with. And he's consistent. Where with the Frostwolf Warlord, he needs to have at least one body on the on the ground to make him worth it. Whereas the Tiger, he doesn't need anything. He just comes out with stealth and he's awesome. I also like the Warlord plays into the flavor of my deck with all the orcs that I have so far. I also love that he looks like the Dark Iron Dwarf. I wonder if they specifically tried to make those two look like each other, kind of. You know, I think that the tiger might be the better choice here, but... I feel like I'm gonna have more fun with the warlord. And also, I guess just because it's on show, I'm not going in this super competitive. I'm going with the Warlord, because it plays into the flavor of my deck. And that's sometimes, that's how I play Hearthstone. Sometimes I create decks that just feel better. And I think that he, he in some situations, might end up just being j better than um, the Tiger. I'll keep it in mind as I'm playing. When I draw him, I'm going to think about whether I would have rather had the Tiger or rather had the Warlord. Most times I'm probably going to think that I would, wish I had the Tiger, but we'll see. I don't have any board clearance. Um, Garrosh has terrible board clearance. Whirlwind, but at least this is gonna activate my guys. And I mean, Kobold Geomancer doesn't activate anything that I have. I have no spells yet. So I'm gonna go with the Whirlwind. Next up, we got a Slam, which is an activating card for the four cards that I now have that can benefit from taking damage. Um, and you get a card back for it surviving. The Grizzly fits right into my three slot, will allow me to keep some of my early drops, which I have a lot of alive for longer. Um, well, a lot of those early drops are War Axes, which is also gonna help me keep stuff alive for long. But it'll allow me to keep my Berserkers alive, my Taskmaster, my Loot Hoarder, who cares, my Organ. I'm thinking Slam on this one. And I like that it has versatility, meaning that if I need an extra two damage done to a creature, I can do it. I think here I would like to have 
I don't have very much that has an um, battle cry, so I'm just gonna go with another elite. Very aggressive uh, four drop curve. Um, Cult Taskmaster, with the kind of deck I have so far, will be very effective when it's time. If the time comes to trade, he's gonna help get a lot more card draw and keep my, my late game strong. Um, although I really have been, he fits into my slot, uh, my, my curve beautifully, the Worgen right now, and I am really seeming to double down on this idea of activating, and I have a few cards that can do it. However, the ability to two for one at that cost is just, mm, this is a tough decision. Fits into the three drop so beautifully. Beautiful versatility. You guys gotta remember when considering cleave how many axes I have at this point. Like you're, you know, I know that it has a huge value in arena because like, you know, it can deal with stuff really well. However, is cleave one of those cards that requires two targets to exist? Because there might be instances in which I can't cast it because I've been keeping the board clear with axes. Like the board where there's only one target. All right, I'm gonna go with you guys on it. I would have strongly considered the worg in there, but. I like the cleave plays into the flavor. It's very garrosh, so. So is the worgen, but. Um, all right, raid leader, uh, he fits into the three drop and he's gonna help the aggression of my deck. Whereas the jungle panther is also very good. Uh, not as aggressive. Um, I've just got so many creatures in this deck that I feel like this is gonna be more valuable than the Jungle Panther, possibly. Yeah, Raid Leader is usually I pass him, almost all the time I pass him up, unless I have a deck that is full of a lot of creatures. It does suck that he is, um, so he uh, he's comparable to the wolf the wolf pack leader or whatever it is that gives plus one on either side of him. And the wolf is better because most of the time you're not giving plus one to any more than a couple creatures, except for way late game. Uh, but he gives it to all of them. Yeah, he can help a little bit extra late game than the wolf, but anyways. All right, I'm gonna go with the panther. I've been waiting to fill up that third drop slot for so long anyways. I need more card draw, especially with a, a deck this aggressive curving out. Even though I still love the, the assassin, he's not good enough to give up on the drake. Or should I go with the seer? So that's my deck. Weird looking curve. It looks a lot like, um, if you'll go to my Twitter again, you'll see the most recent uh, you know, I might have been wrong about my third screenshot down being Garrosh. That might be four screenshots down. Anyways, uh, my, I had a Paladin deck that looked like this, though. That kind of a curve. An empty third drop. Um, Alright, so when I come back, I'm gonna check this out, see if it does okay. Stay tuned. <laughs> 